Here's a funny story. I am a weird person, and today I want to play music on weird stuff. Recently, I saw a YouTube video from this dude here, and he played music on stepper motors. And I was like, oh my god, I need to do this. So uh, now I'm going to do this. Now hold up. What is a stepper motor and how does it work? Well, I have one here and if we open it up we'll find some weird stuff and a part I no longer know where it's supposed to be. Now, if we remove one of these weird things from the other weird thing, we end up with two weird things. Kinda like giving birth. But these are not your ordinary weird things. This here is the shaft of the motor, which has two of these weird rings with notches on them. Here is the inside of the motor and you can see eight coils, but these four are wired together and these other four are also wired together. You can also see the notches on the inside of the motor. Now, if I can count correctly, which I know I can't, both of these rings on this shaft are supposed to have 50 notches. And as you can see, the rings are slightly misaligned, causing the notch to be in between two notches on the other ring. Now, on the inside of the motor, you have 48 notches, which as you can realize is two fewer than on the shaft. Now, when you put these together, that causes a lot of misalignment. Everything is misaligned in all sort of directions because you have the two misaligned rings on the shaft and you have misalignment with the notches inside the motor. And what's nice about that is that when you energize one of these coils, it will align in a certain way. And when you energize the other coil, it will align in another way. And if you alternate which coil you energize, you will also make the motor jump forwards by half a notch. But what's also funny when you jump between these notches is that the motor vibrates a bit. And if we jump fast enough, our vibration will be sound. Yay! Now I'm sorry for this bad explanation, but explaining the full inner workings of a stepper motor was never part of the scope of this video anyways. So if you want an actually good explanation, I recommend you finding that elsewhere. But the only important thing to understand for this video is that when stepper motor steps, stepper motor vibrate. Now I don't have the smarts to myself uh, alternate the coil currents and uh, alternate which coil you activate to make the stepper motor rotate nice. So I will use a stepper motor driver like this. And I will throw together a test circuit here so you can hear how the motor vibrates every time it steps. So we put the driver in the board and we'll put in a lot of other things and then when I press this button here it will vibrate. Now it's pretty hard to hear because I put a super loud button in it but I can remove the wire to the button and touch the wires and then it will step too so you can hear. Onwards to building a cool thing. So the first step of doing this was finding some stepper motors. So my plan here was to find the absolute worst quality stepper motors in existence. Because they would probably be the loudest stepper motors. So I went on AliExpress, I searched for stepper motor and sorted by the cheapest option. And then just bought the first item that came up. Next, I needed some drivers for the stepper motors, and I used the same principle here. I just bought the cheapest drivers I could possibly find, since those would probably drive the motors in the loudest way possible. While I wait for the stepper motors to arrive, I am going to create a circuit with buzzers instead of motors, just to see if I can make this work, and if I'm good enough at programming to do this. So I quickly threw together this circuit here. We have an ESP32 controlling the main sound part and we have eight piezoelectric buzzers here. And eight just happens to be as many as PWM channels as these have, so eight is our maximum. And then we have some LED lights here that are connected to these speakers or buzzers. 
so they will light up when they are making sound. So now we just need to make it work with a lot of programming. Here we have a MIDI file, and that is basically just a bunch of notes that come next to it, each other. So I created this song, let's hear it. Really beautiful song. So our program works like this. It looks at the first notes, and then it's like... Hey Motor1, can you play a C for me? Yeah, sure. And then it reaches the end here of the notes. And the program is like, Hey Motor1, you can stop playing now. Okay. And then we get over here, and it says, Hey Motor1, can you play a C for me again? Okay. And then we get here, Hey Motor1, can you stop playing again? Yeah, sure. And then here, Hey Motor1, can you play a C for me? Yeah, sure. But then we get here, and we have two notes playing at once. Can you see, we have both this and this. So the program will again be like, Hey Motor1, can you play an E for me? Can't you see I'm busy, I'm playing something here? Do you think you're better me? Well, come at me bro, come at me you little I'm going to kill your entire family, man. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, Motor2, can you play this note then? Yeah, sure. And then we get over here. Hey Motor1, can you stop playing now? Yeah, sure. Hey Motor2. You can also stop playing now. Yeah, sure. And now we have played this sequence. What the program does then is to just save this conversation that the motors and the program just had and puts it on my control computer, on the ESP32 in that case. And how it does that is a super complicated process known as printing something, I copy it and then paste it in the source code for the ESP. Amazing, let's see if this works. Okay, so in theory this should work now. I just need to enable it here. Well, this seems to be working. So our stepper motors have arrived here. So let's just open them up and see how it looks. Here we have our connecting wires and there looks like we have five stepper motors. Nice! It doesn't make a lot of sound when you turn it like this, but let's hope it's noisy. Now I have hooked it up and uh, let's Turn on the power. Ah! That was uh, loud. Let's try it again. Oh, it's, it's shaking. This is uh, probably not too good for the motor. It, it, it doesn't sound good at all. Okay, so the problem was that when the ESP is uh, in the reset mode, this pin over here that controls the motor is left floating. When a pin is left floating, it is basically equivalent to doing this. So what I did here was disconnect the data pin of our microcontroller from our data input pin of the stepper motor driver. And here I've set up a little experiment. So you see I have a wire connected to a probe that's connected to my oscilloscope. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of noise on that wire, because basically when it is not connected to anything, it becomes an antenna. And that means that all of this up and down and stuff goes straight into our stepper motor driver. And that's why it's just outputting a bunch of noise, because the antenna is just receiving a bunch of noise. So how do we fix this? Well, the common way to do this is just add some kind of reference point that removes all of this noise. This noise is not really strong at all. If we just try to pull it down by a couple of microamps, it will disappear. So basically what we do is we take a pretty large resistor and connect it to either ground or VCC, and then the noise is gone. So now when we know that, let's uh, 
turn on the power and quickly disconnect the reset pin. It still sounds pretty weird. Let's try to... Oh, now it sounds a lot better when I'm pre putting pressure on it. Oh, this sounds good. That's really good. And... Uh, it's loud, it's really loud. The listing that said, oh, it's so quiet, that's probably a bit false. Let's try uh, upload a song that's, that actually only uses one note at a time to see if this can play some uh, nice melodies. Now I added the pull down resistor here so we won't get that stupid vibrating thing, as you can hear. And I uploaded Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on it. So let's try if it works. Oh, it doesn't sound anything at all when you hold it up. That's pretty funny. Let's try connecting the four other motors too and see how it sounds. Probably like that. So now I've wired up uh, five of these uh, the stepper motor controllers. I, I ran out of these uh, male to male jumper cables, so, uh, well, I, I had to do it like this with female to male jumper cables uh, and, and like this. But let's not uh, look too closely at this and just uh, look at how it sounds, shall we? Here we have our five motors. Let's try to turn on the power. Well, I, I still have the song that only uses one motor, so this won't work. But it sounds like a horror movie when I stop holding this like that. It's scary! I put the stepper motors on some styrofoam here, so hopefully they will sound better without me holding on to them. And I also put these pieces of styrofoam here so you can see them spinning. And I uploaded the Firefly song by uh, Owl City, because for some reason that song seems to be played on every single stepper motor music player on YouTube. So I thought I'll do the same. So let's uh, continue to ignore this chaos here and turn this on. There seems to still be some sort of vibrating in the table that's not good. I should probably build some kind of uh, thing to hold this together and maybe screw them down to screw screw them down to a table. But this sounds pretty epic, not gonna lie. If we ignore the weird sounds. There seems to be some issue with the bass here sometimes too, that the motor just vibrates like this instead of spinning. You can see in this sometimes. Let, there it vibrated a bit and, not, and did not spin. I, I wonder why it's doing that. But it still sounds pretty awesome. Oh, what's doing that, those annoying sounds was the wires to the motors. 
I'm holding up them now and it's sounding much better. I gotta say, this is pretty rewarding. I like this. This sounds much better than I would have thought motors can sound. And uh, for me, who just threw stuff together like this uh, and not some super advanced circuity, circuitry stuff. I imagine the next steps for me is to uh, fix this so these aren't vibrating. That means screw them together and screw them down to some sort of solid surface. Uh, making real spinners for them. Figuring out why the motors are vibrating instead of spinning in some of the bass notes. Making a PCB for this and then maybe ordering some more motors so I can have more channels and I can have volume control by choosing how many motors play a certain frequency. But all of that is for next time. So I'll see you then. Bye bye.